Women's Basketball Game Day on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. The beautiful Sentai Center, the site for a battle between the visiting Marquette Golden Eagles and the Xavier Musketeers. I'm Mike Schmaltz alongside the voluminous basketball mind of Rich Hoyt. Rich Marquette has won three out of four here in conference. They're still seventh, got stung by the Butler Bulldogs, so they're trying to revamp from that. And the Xavier Musketeers looking for their first home victory since the season opener against Utah. Yeah, well, Megan Duffy has done a tremendous job in her first season in Milwaukee. Preseason picked ninth in the Big East Conference, and uh, Marquette is right there in the NCAA Tournament Conference after losing 67 and a half points per game. For Xavier, you can see the improvement. They continue to get better. Just hasn't always translated into the wins column. Uh, but Melanie Moore's team, nonetheless, has improved. They shoot the ball extremely well from three. Melanie Moore's team had four scores in double figures against DePaul on Friday night. We take a look at the DePaul Blue Demons atop the conference at 6-0. Villanova in at 5-2, and, and then the log jam. Creighton, Butler, St. John, Seton Hall, Marquette all in the mix. Yeah, log jam it is from Villanova to Marquette there. Everybody has a chance uh, to get into that second echelon. And Xavier really with a win today can start to uh, begin the conversation of them being in that group as well. Marquette lost a lot of firepower from last year. Selena Lott is back. She averaged seven points again in 26 minutes. She is assuming a leadership role this season for the Marquette Golden Eagles. 16 points a game, four rebounds, 5.8 assists, 13 double-figure scoring games, and a huge 30-point game earlier this season. Yeah, she's improved tremendously offensively. The reigning Big East player of the week, shooting 53% from the field, 69% from two-point field goals. And you see that assist total ninth in the NCAA. Let's take a look at the Xavier Musketeers being carried by Ariana Gray. 17 points, 10 rebounds a game, 12 double-figure scoring games, five double-doubles, and six 20-point games this season. Uh, Ari Gray, big-time rebounder, leading the Big East Conference for the second consecutive season on the boards, also averaging 21 points and shooting 47% from three-point field goals in Big East Conference play. A couple of first-year head coaches go at it today. Megan Duffy for the Marquette Golden Eagles, and Melanie Moore for the Xavier Musketeers. We'll have more when we come back on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. Almost set for tip here between the Marquette Golden Eagles and Xavier Musketeers. Let's get a look at tonight's starting lineups. First for the Marquette Golden Eagles, Jordan King having a nice season at the point as she takes over there. We told you about Selena Lott, Isabel Spingola, good outside shooter, and Lauren Van Clunen returning to the post after missing the Butler game Friday. Yeah, you look at Van Clunen, she's got to be excited to be back here at home in the Cinta Center. And for the Xavier Musketeers, point guard Aaliyah Dunham on a little bit of a roll coming into today. Her last three, she's averaging 14 points and five assists. Lauren Wasselson, a good outside shooter. Kerry Gross for the Musketeers, double figures in three of the last five and five of the last seven. Sarah Liondecker mans the post and Ariana Gray leading the charge for Xavier. 
Mike, I think for, for Xavier today, it's going to be really important. they got to shoot the basketball well. You know, they, they have shot it well from three this year, actually just as well from three than from two-point field goal range. And they also have to rebound. Marquette's an outstanding rebounding team, plus nine. They cannot let Marquette get into a double-digit rebounding margin. For Marquette, I think it's all about sharing and caring. They're second in the Big East in assist, in, uh, but they are last in turnover margin. They have to take care of the basketball. They do need to defend that three for Xavier today. As I mentioned, Xavier is one of the top three-point shooting teams in the Big East Conference. Xavier ranks third in Big East three-point percentage at 36.8%. And Marquette leads in field goal percentage at 447. Marquette ranks second in Big East three-point percentage defense. They hold opponents to 29.2%. Center circle, it's out. Tia Anderson and Sarah Leyendecker. Leyendecker for the Musketeers. Xavier in the home whites, trimmed in the blue. Marquette in the signature powder blue, trimmed in gold. Our officials today, Andrew Bills, Linda Miles, and Ray Bullock. Underway, and Marquette controls the tip with Jordan King. See Xavier looking to blitz those ball screens really hard. Pull up from the baseline, and Van Clunen on the board first for the Marquette Golden Eagles. Yeah, the hometown kid out of Mason, Ohio, just about 15, 20 miles north of here. Gets on the board first. Van Clunen banged up in that Butler game. And back to the floor here today. Musketeers first turnover. They average about 17 a game. This is Isabel Spingola. Going right back inside to Van Clunen. King controls the wing. Van Clunen into a double team, good dish. This is Anderson, and that shot won't go for her. Van Clunen with a big rebound, the putback too strong. Gets her own rebound again, goes up and draws contact. Nice. Lord Van Clunen, a little inspiration here in her hometown. Nice effort from Van Clunen. She's a really good free throw shooter as well, 91%. So you, you would think that these are going to go down. That's an early foul against Ariana Gray for the Musketeers. Xavier's first. And Van Clunen at the free throw line, knocks it home. She's 91% for the season. 29 of 32 to enter today. And what a huge asset that can be for a post player that gets aggressive, gets to the line, and it can convert the opportunity. Oh, she's one of those Marquette returnees that really have stepped up their games from, from last season with an increased role. Every one of the returners on this team has an increased role, and Van Clunen one of them. The shot for Sarah Leyendecker. That was off the front of the rim. Kerry Gross battles for the rebound for the Musketeers, and it's out off her. Marquette working on a four-point lead early. Sarah Leyendecker, local product as well, out of Mercy High School here in Cincinnati. You would think the two of them might have faced off at some point here in the Tri-State. Spingola on Lauren Wasselson. King drives it in, and Leah Dunham got a piece of that, and... Can she come up with a steal? It'll be a held ball. And it'll go to the Xavier Musketeers. And we get done on 33 steals so far this season and see her start making the impact down on the defensive end. There's Megan Duffy in her first season, 12 and 5, 3 and 3, 50 head coaching victories. She got that on November the 30th against Tulsa, and that's in less than three years at the helm. She came over from two great seasons at Miami of Ohio. Yeah, she's somewhat local as well from the Dayton, Ohio area. Had a really, really good high school career at Chaminade Julian High School. Played on some outstanding teams there. There you see Melanie Moore, who worked with Duffy at Michigan under Kim Barnes Arrigo, both on the same staff for quite some time. And Melanie Moore trying to turn this program around. Infused a lot of energy into this Xavier lineup. It's a steal for the Musketeers, and Leyendecker comes up with it. Drive inside for Kerry Gross, and that's up and in. Xavier on the board for the first time. Well, that was a great decision, too, by Sarah Leyendecker to realize she was going to have to dribble through pressure and decided to give it up to a guard, and Kerry Gross knew what to do with it. Gross had 16 points against Northwestern back on the 21st of December. She's in nine double-figure games this season as Ariana Green comes up with a rebound. Xavier a chance to tie. Leyendecker cleans up. The mishandle, and then too strong on the shot. Rebound off for Spingola and Marquette.
They include and got contact there from Gray and just enough to throw that shot off and Gray away with a rebound. You can see Mel Moore's game plan is to really hedge hard on those ball screens by Marquette. Marquette sets a lot of those and really it's a, it's a, shine, a sign that they're really trying to take away the perimeter of Marquette. Really got to help on that roller. Three away for Ariana Gray. That's off the front of the rim. It won't go. And a rebound off for Spigola. Him and a nice day on the boards early. That's her third. Both teams with a cold start. Van Clunen working inside again. A little floating hook, no good. Anderson away with a rebound, and she'll get contact on the putback. That will be Xavier's second foul here in the first corner. Call that one on Lauren Wasselson, her first. That'll bring Ayanna Townsend into the game as Ayanna Gray may have taken some contact to the face. She'll leave. See her wearing the protective goggles when she plays. Adjusted those, and she may have some difficulty with the left eye. So 20 to shoot for Marquette as they inbound here with Selena Lott. Good play, Spingola breaks three and lays it home. Yeah, good execution on the out of bounds by Marquette. Three up Spingola, who is really known as a three point shooter, gets a wide open layup that time. Marquette now one for its last nine. Dunham across for Kerry Gross inside for Townsend turns. Shot too strong and a rebound off for Marquette. Marquette's done a really good job of contesting shots at the rim. Ayanna Townsend in a battle there with Van Clunen. Shot won't fall. Marquette scrambles up the rebound. Van Clunen goes right back after a beautiful spin to the block and a layup in. And a timeout now for Xavier and Melanie Moore as Lauren Van Clunen cleaning up inside for the Golden Eagles. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe. And we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Hartford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. Back here at Sintas Center on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi Women's Basketball this afternoon. Marquette, the Golden Eagles, out to an 8-2 lead over the Xavier Musketeers early. Get a look at this series. Marquette leading at 14-7. They won seven in a row. Last meeting was February the 24th, about a year ago. And Marquette 79, the Musketeers 53. That can't be a, uh, a team that's probably more happy to see that graduating class from Marquette last season leave Milwaukee than, than Xavier. Losing the last seven, the only one they won against that senior class was the first matchup that they played against them. That was all the way back in January of 2015, excuse me, 2016. Get a good look at Selena Lott to give you an idea of what Marquette lost. Natisha Heideman, 18 points a game. Alizé Blockton, 14 points a game. Danielle King, a point guard, 12 points a game. Erica Davenport inside, 12 points a game. And Amani Wilborn, 12 points a game. And then Selena Lott was the 
leading score after that with seven. That was a historically outstanding class, not just in Marquette history, but really, you know, for the Big East Conference. We saw them, you know, as freshmen and knew that they were going to be good. I really thought they had a great chance of getting to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament last season. I think if they would have beaten DePaul in that close Big East championship game, they might have been able to host, which would have helped. They lost a tough second round game to Texas A&M. Morgan Sharp's in a little bit of trouble here for the Musketeers. Found some relief with Wasselston. Now Dunham drives it in on King. A rebound down with Cameron Taylor. That's her second nice aggressive rebound of the day. Xavier was able to get comfortable around the rim on Friday night against DePaul, but Marquette is making things much more difficult this Sunday afternoon. Good give there for King, and she'll pick up contact in the left block. Saw King just come around the screen off the point. Good look and a foul here against the Musketeers. And it's against Diana Townsend. Townsend's first and the third for the Musketeers. Well, Megan Duffy has been really pleased with Jordan King and her progress as a freshman. Of course, Big, Big East preseason freshman of the year out of Rockton, Illinois. Big time score in high school. Really has had to take on more of a ball handling role for Duffy's crew this season. She misses the first free throw. Coach Duffy, very complimentary yesterday of Jordan King's transition over to that role. King knocks in the second. She's a 69% free throw shooter for the season. Marquette's lead out to seven points as the Musketeers off to a 14% shooting start. Courtney Pranger in, the freshman for the Musketeers, working out there with Morgan Sharp, Siana Townsend, Aliyah Dunham, and now Kerry Grosshandis. Ball went inside for Kerry Gross. Couldn't come up with a layup. And Marquette will take over. Ariana Gray, Xavier's leading scorer, in the locker room right now after that contact to the face. So they'll address her medical needs and hope she can return sooner rather than later. She is a massive part of any success the Musketeers will have this afternoon. Well, we saw that on Friday night as well. Ari Gray went out. And, you know, Xavier is just a completely different team without her in the game. So much that she can do in terms of rebounding the ball and scoring. And also handle it when needed as well. I think a lot of Ayanna Townsend and her physical ability, but Townsend's found out eight times in 17 games. He said physical ability. And she picked up one here quickly early. Here's Cameron Taylor going to come up with a turnover for Marquette. A few extra steps there in the lane. And Xavier back to it. Looking for its second basket is now the Musketeers down to 12.5% from the floor. Good hedge coming out aggressively was Chloe Murata. Murata, a sophomore, 6 1. First foul for Marquette. Dunham settles the Musketeers back in. See Marquette go primarily straight up defensively. Megan Duffy says they use the zone, but it won't be often. There's an air ball there from Dunham. A lot after the rebound for the Golden Eagles, and it's off Ayanna Townsend and back to Marquette. Going to switch it back and give it to the Musketeers. First call down there by Ray Bullock, pointed Marquette Marquette's ball. direction. Now it's back to Marquette. Yeah. Xavier just in a funk offensively right now. You got to credit Marquette defensively for what they've done. Spingola holds, they go inside. Good look in there for Cameron Taylor. She powers her way past Sarah Lyon Decker to the bucket. Well, Cameron Taylor is one of those freshmen for Megan Duffy that really has improved throughout the season. Had 23 points, 11 rebounds in 24 minutes last Sunday against Seton Hall. She's really improved throughout this season. Freshman out of Peoria, Illinois. Townsend going inside. May got away with an extra step. Shot well off the mark. Spingola away and running. Pull up three is up and good. And Isabel Spingola delivers. Yeah, really credit King for 
That's penetration out in transition and a nice kick to Spingola. That's her game. Spot up, get the puppy set, and put it in. Carrie Gross trying to answer for Xavier, and that's one of her strong suits driving from the wing. She'll pick up the foul. <laughs> foul against Selena Lott. See that good look there from King. Nice dish out for Isabel Spingola, and she's hit some big threes through her career for the Golden Eagles. Kerry Gross to the free throw line and a pretty nice run here for the Musketeers. She's 72% at the line for the season and misses the first. Ziegler now down to 10% from the floor. Hmm. Gross able to float it in. Musketeers break a 4-51 scoring drought with that free throw. Aliana Gray back to the end of the Musketeer bench. Kick out. Shot up and good, and that's King for two. Uh, Marquette has really does a nice job of sharing the basketball. They're top ten in the country in assists. They average assists on 70% of their made baskets, a tremendous percentage. It's a big reason why they've had the success that they've had this season. Wyandecker in the traffic was short. Cameron Taylor, a nice, easy turnaround in transition. It's a 15-1 run for Marquette over four minutes. Well, you know, Marquette, really outstanding team on the perimeter, but you can see with Van Clunen and Taylor and her development, really starting to develop an inside game. Wasselson, good look at the three. It was on line. Wyandecker battling for the rebound, picked up some contact. That one will go against the Marquette Golden Eagles. See Ariana Gray getting treated there. Only a matter of time, I think, before she's back in the lineup, especially now that she's back in the bench area. Connor Barnes, the Xavier trainer. See what an impact Ariana Gray makes on the ball game for the Musketeers. A must-have. Not a nice-to-have, but a must-have for Melanie Moore. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren Wasselson in for Leah Dunham. She just told Melanie Moore she's ready to go back in, and just as soon as she says that, she's back at the scorer's table. Whistle again inside, and they will wave Ariana Gray back out of the floor. Courtney Pringer will come out for the Musketeers. Xavier slowly sliding down the field goal percentage, now at 8%. Dunham to inbound. In for Wasselson. Guarded well by Spingola. Gray, the pull up well short. And a beautiful rebound there for Lubo. You know, Mike, I had a, a rule when I was coaching you. Spingola knocks down another three. Melody Moore is going to call a timeout, and I'll hold my thought. 21 to 3 is the Marquette advantage. The Golden Eagles out to an 8 0 run or a minute 13. It's an 18 to 1 run over 455. And the Musketeers being held to just 7% for the floor. Well, Marquette really has just been outstanding. They've gotten some scores in the half court, and they've gotten some in transition as well. And Spingola responsible for a couple of those. but. You know, Mike, it's really interesting. We, we, we had the game on Friday night, Xavier and DePaul, and, you know, after seeing a, a fast-paced up-and-down game with DePaul, and, you know, Marquette really likes to likes to pack it in a lot more defensively. You know, a lot of the driving lanes, the, the entry passes that were there on Friday night against DePaul um, are not there uh, this afternoon against Marquette. You know, really an interesting dynamic for any team in the Big East when you, you're playing against a, a DePaul-Marquette uh, travel partner situation. It's a tough turnaround for both teams. Two games in really less than 72 hours, a little more than 48, really. Ball comes off and into the game. Clerk Kafis controls for Marquette. Kafis uh, now out front. Xavier goes zone here. Looks like a 3 2. All right, Gray at the top. Corners are sometimes off open. In that 3-2. Great step through there for Altia Anderson, and layup's good. That was Anderson just bullying her way through that zone. 
Ariana Gray going at Anderson in contact. Anderson got a pretty clean piece of it. They may call the foul on the help side. Nope, they're going to call it against Altia Anderson. Well, since coming back into the game, Ariana Gray has been very aggressive. Three shots and three possessions. You know, the first possession, I was, I was getting ready to say before that timeout, she shot a jump shot, wasn't anywhere close. I had a rule when I was coaching with my players, unless they were a deadly shooter, if you just come into the game for the first time, you weren't allowed to shoot it on the first touch. You just, just felt like players need to get in a rhythm, get comfortable in the game before that. And that, that jump shot that Ariana Gray was a prime example. She's much, been much more aggressive attacking the basket the previous two. Ball the front of the rim, no good. And a rebound down for Van Clunen and Marquette. It's a great situation for Megan Duffy. She's going to be able to test her bench here early in this ball game. Lubo going inside for Van Clunen. The ball deflected. Van Clunen able to collect. Goes back to battle. Tries to find Anderson. Missed the handle. Regains. Reverse layup won't fall. And Ariana Gray with a rebound. I know she didn't make it, but that's an athletic move by Altia Anderson. Who's really played well her last few games. 15 seconds now. It's time expiring here in the first. Thorne Wasselson drives it inside. Picks up contact. It's Altia Anderson again. That's her second and the fifth now for Marquette with 9.3 seconds to go here in the quarter. On now, Chloe Murata. As Anderson will get a quick trip to the bench. We're trying to protect her with the big lead and 9.3 to go here in the first quarter. Lauren Wasselson at the line is 75% for the season. She's coming off a 12-point game against the Paul here Friday, and Wasselson can't connect, and the woes continue for the Musketeers. <laughs> Nothing is going right for Xavier at the offensive end. 25% from the line, 7% from the floor. And Wasselson able to deliver. No so in the backcourt, that's going to go against Ariana Gray, and that'll be her second. Yep, that was a cheap one, too. So the trouble's piling up for the Musketeers now. Your best scorer and rebounder is 2,000 in the first quarter. And I don't think Mel Moore's going to be able to leave her on the bench with two, just with the game the way that it is. And this Van Clunen in a mid-range won't fall, but a huge first quarter for the Marquette Golden Eagles. They lead it 23-4 to as Xavier scoring drown at 7%. From the field, Marquette shoots 45% from the field. They mount a 19-2 run over 6.30. And Marquette in control at the end of one here on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope, we believe, and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business. Chemical science. Occupational therapy. Philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. Marquette Golden Eagles in control here in Sinta Center. See Xavier fans trying to pump a little life into their Musketeers as Xavier shot 7% in the first quarter. Marquette 45% really took advantage of every Xavier miscue and out to the big lead. 
this week's Big East Women's Basketball Honor Roll. Kristen Spoyer, a big night on Friday to knock off these Marquette Golden Eagles. On the honor roll this week, Ariana Gray, we told you about her throughout this ball game. Kadasha Hoppy, Sonia Morris, who we saw here on Friday night have a nice game, and Jalen Agnew off to a huge start for the Creighton Blue Jays this season. Yeah, Jalen Agnew has really carried Creighton uh, thus far in the season, two games behind DePaul. But uh, there's a lot of players on there that have really carried their teams. Ariana Gray, of course, for Xavier. As I mentioned, I think she's got to play in this, this second quarter. You know, you're down 19. You know, she's got to get back in there at some point just to try to chip away at this lead if you're Xavier and Mel Moore. But you got to really credit Marquette for the effort, especially at the defensive end in that first quarter. Really just did not give anything up easy to Xavier. Bray is not out to start the second quarter again with the two early fouls. And Musketeers will pick up their first foul here in the second quarter, I believe. That was a kickball. Call it a kickball, and now we will reset for Marquette with 20 to shoot. King kicks out for a lot. Shot short, beautiful cleanup down there by Murata. And the miss cleaned up by Sarah Leyendecker. Well, I, I talked about how Xavier really needed to keep the rebounding margin and a minimal for Marquette. They've out-rebounded every opponent this year. It's Lauren Wasserson it's on the board with a three. Marquette is plus 14 rebounding margin already, Mike. Good looking side for Van Clunen. Kick to the corner, three is up, and that's good. Another one from Isabel Spingola. Spingola is four for four from the floor, three for three from three-point range. The leading score with 11. That was a great example of how Marquette shares the basketball. They go inside out. Van Clunen kicks it. Lauren Wasselson drives inside, picks up the foul. That one goes against the Golden Eagles. They're first here in the second corner. It's a foul on Murata. Here you see Lauren Wasselson knocks it down, fell down as well. So Wasselson back to the free throw line for the Musketeers. One for two there so far this afternoon. It's every point you can get right now. Well, they're not taking advantage of the opportunities at the free throw line either. Two for seven now are the Musketeers. Wasted opportunities. That's one of their stronger suits. East in Big East play so far this season. Xavier, 73% from the line against Big East opposition. 67% for the season. It's a wide open shot for Taylor won't fall and the rebound off for Ayanna Townsend and the Musketeers. Got him, good pass, pass. inside for Liondecker and she's fouled. So Liondecker will go to the line, one of Xavier's better free throw shooters. Call that one against Cameron Taylor, the freshman. Taylor's first and the second for Marquette here in the corner. See a nice delivery from Aaliyah Dunham. And you know, I like to see Sarah Leyendecker as she continues to grow and develop, maybe give a shot fake there, maybe be able to use her left hand. Another missed free throw. Leyendecker, a good free throw shooter too. Leyendecker for the season, 87%. She missed just four times up to that last offering. Knocks in the second. See, you're almost a double digits. Van Clunen, ball knocked away. They will confer and give the ball to the Musketeers. I think what this zone has done, at least, is it's it's neutralized Marquette a little bit, and they've had to think a little bit. They've moved the ball well against it, I think Marquette has, but I think Xavier's gotten into a rhythm maybe defensively. Pull up three for Leah Dunham. That won't fall. Huge rebound inside again. Well, Cameron Taylor really showed some athleticism on the boards today. Good leak out there for Locke. Caught it in traffic. Got it blocked. Went up again. Got it blocked. Two blocks for Leyendecker in that exchange. Musketeers will look for Wasselson. Can't connect. Townsend off with a rebound. Rotation up and they reset with Aaliyah Dunham.
Ryan Decker on Taylor. Ball knocked away, Van Clunen comes out of there with it. Slow it up and leave it back for Selena Lott. Lott scoreless, by the way, 0 for 5 from the floor for Marquette. They don't need her right now. That's the first one spin goal is missed all afternoon. Pull up there for Deja Ross, and Ross catch for three. Ross coming off an ankle injury that kept her out of a couple games last weekend. Deja Ross has started a lot of games, played a lot of basketball, a junior for, for Xavier, but really a struggle this year, shooting just 25%. A nice backdoor cut there by Lott. And a lot on the board for the first time this afternoon. One for six, beautiful dish there from Van Clunen. Really, if Deja Ross can get going, she can shoot the ball from out there, just has not done it consistently. See that heavily taped right ankle. Beinecker going to try a floater too strong, and Van Clunen down with a rebound. The rebound advantage continues to mount for Marquette. And Taylor too strong. Ross will sit off with a rebound. 23 to 10, the rebounding advantage. Oh, the Golden Eagles. Ryan Decker going inside, has it knocked away. Nice block. Lock comes out of there with it. Spingola transition three. That won't go. Spingola's just second miss from the field today. A little entanglement on the rebound. We talked in the open, Mike, about Lott and you know how, how good she's been offensively this year. She's averaging 16 points and shooting it at a high percentage, but she's really one of the best two-way players in the Big East Conference. Really does a good job at the defensive end. Came up with a nice block. Foul against Aliyah Dunham for the Musketeers, her first, Xavier's first of the quarter. Capus controls, leave it up top for King. King had it knocked away from behind by Dunham. Finds Spangola who gets contact, no yeah. whistle. A lot of contact from Ayanna Townsend. Ball deflected off for Van Clunen in a reset here, but three to shoot now. It's Murata going inside. That shot too strong and a shot clock violation there for Marquette. So a rare miscue for the Golden Eagles here in this ball game. Still lead by a healthy 18. Morgan Sharps, good three-point shooter into the ballgame for the Musketeers. This is Courtney Pranger on the wing for Xavier. Sharps trying to go inside, and she'll get some contact down the floor. It's going to be a foul, actually, against the Musketeers. Mm. That goes against Ayanna Townsend. And Townsend picks up her second. Xavier's second here in the quarter. Yep, as poorly as Xavier has played offensively, that was just their third turnover. Dunham got a hand on a pass right back for Murata. Including nice good dish there for Spingola in traffic. Headed blocked by Pranger. It's out of bounds off Xavier. Marquette will inbound with four to shoot. Actually, Gomez is going to check in now for the Musketeers. Soriana Gray still on the bench. It brings up our timeout here. Marquette still in control, 30 to 12. Musketeers trying to battle back. Marquette shooting 42% from three-point range. They're three of seven and in control here in Cincinnati. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope, we believe, and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference.
the amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Mike Schmaltz, Rich Hoyt, back with you on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. Marquette in control here in a very impressive first half for the Marquette Golden Eagles, shooting 38% from the floor and holding the Musketeers to 15% from the floor. Marquette, three of seven from behind the arc. Isabel Spingola with 11 points to lead all scorers for the Golden Eagles. Coming up at halftime, stick with us. We'll take a look at the tribute being paid around the Big East to Dr. Martin Luther King. January 15. 1929 to April 4, 1968 is his celebratory holiday coming up tomorrow. And a great tribute around the Big East here this weekend. And also hear from Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis with the most recent edition of Big East Fast Break, the weekly women's basketball installment. You know, Mike Marquette's really not setting the world on fire offensively. You mentioned they're just at 38% from the field, but it's really their defense that have dominated the game. They're just physically manhandling Xavier, Xavier's offensive end. Ball is slapped away, it is picked up and trying to beat the shot clock is Kafis. The shot won't go, rebound off for Townsend and Aliyah Dunham quickly down the floor. Megan Duffy was very complimentary of Aliyah Dunham yesterday, said she's 11, what she's seeing on tape here recently. Dunham started to turn the offensive corner here for the Musketeers the last couple of ball games. Ball inside for Kerry Gross showing some courage going into the trees. It is knocked away into the floor. A held ball will stay with the Musketeers, but seven seconds to shoot. Well, Mike, you mentioned Aliyah Dunham. I, mean, I think one of the biggest things that you know Mel Moore was challenged with coming in was T. Owens, her senior, who started in the previous two seasons has had the, the knee injury, eventually had to retire, and you know, Leah Dunham's had to take on a lot since then and really has stepped up. Gross a floater is time expiring on the shot clock, and I believe Ayanna Townsend aggressively going after that rebound is going to pick up number three. Just to give you an idea of how aggressively Ayanna Townsend plays. <laughs> 16 minutes of ball game she averages. She's fouled out eight times. She has three fouls here in this game. She is really getting after her. And they told her to go down there and turn it loose, but I think they'd like to see a little more control out of Townsend. She's played eight minutes today and has three fouls. Yeah, 90 feet from Marquette's basket. You might want to tone it down a little bit. Ball is inside. No calling offensive foul here against Marquette. Murata, she got into Courtney Pranger. Pranger really showed some toughness, the Musketeer freshman defensively. Looks like we might have a replay review to see if there's a little bit extra added to that effort. Didn't see a whole lot of purposeful, just a nice aggressive turn to the basket there for Chloe Murata, the 6'1 sophomore. That's all you need though, Mike, is a put it in a flagrant situation when you, uh, you throw that elbow purpose or not and that's that the question up. so philosophically both players are entitled to the same space it's whether or not you consider the offensive team to have the advantage and say the privilege in this case mm -hmm. Baldy come up swung that elbow a little bit high and I don't know if it made contact there with Courtney Pringer if it did Pringer certainly able to take that shot off the jaw and continue they're going to say play on. Nice job of making that decision quickly, too. You'll see the move here. Yeah, it didn't look intentional, but you no. saw Melanie Moore looking for some type of whistle, and she got it. Third foul for Marquette here in the corner. Xavier back to it. Gross in trouble, almost hit it stolen over there. That's Norell Lubo. 
A freshman from North Andover, Massachusetts at Tabor Academy. Averages a point, a couple of rebounds a game. That was a nice job by Lubo, jumping that really uh, handoff lane as they were trying to hand it off. Six to shoot. Dunham taking it inside on Lubo. Ball knocked out of bounds on a rebound. Say it's off Marquette. Musketeers will inbound with one to shoot. In for Pranger, got it away. Settles off the front of the rim and wouldn't fall. Loose ball comes up for Gross, throws one off the glass and in. Really key three and a half minutes here for Xavier. Gonna to dictate whether they're gonna be able to hang around and make it, make it interesting in the second half, how they end this, the first half here. Gross is tied for Xavier's team lead in scoring with Lauren Wasselson, both with five. This is Kafitz. Lugo, Travel. and she traveled and will turn it back to the Musketeers. The seventh Marquette turnover. Musketeers have not taken great advantage. Here we see Gross just comes up with the loose ball and throws it up off the backboard and in. Any way Xavier can get it right now. Little English off the glass on a Sunday. Xavier's outscored Marquette this quarter. It's really stifled the Musketeers defensively. They've been everywhere, and they come up with a steal here. That was King. Pranger battling forward. It'll be a held ball, and the Golden Eagles will get it back. That was not a good pass by Sarah Leyendecker. She was looking to go high-low, and there's a lot of help on that backside. Narelle Lubo controls the point here in this set for Megan Duffy, the first year head coach for the Marquette Golden Eagles. Including lost control, Taylor picked it up, came up short on the offering, but picked up a foul. We'll go against Courtney Pranger for the Musketeers, her first, Xavier's fourth here in the quarter. I like the athleticism that Cameron Taylor's bringing to the floor. Hit nine points against Butler, hit 23 coming off the bench against Seton Hall in the 12th. Well, you know, obviously we've talked about how Marquette lost a lot of players from, from last season, but I do like some of these freshmen, Jordan King and Cameron Taylor in particular. Got Kafis coming off the bench. A testament to Megan Duffy's Lubo. retention prowess. Six of seven recruits stayed with Marquette after the coaching change. Obviously. Carolyn Keeger going to Penn State following last season. Obviously, Carolyn Keeger recruited well to Marquette. Duffy just followed it up by recruiting the recruits. Wasselson almost has it taken away there by King. It'll be a held ball, and this time stays with Xavier. That was a great job by King of getting into Wasselson's shooting pocket. Getting the strip. King has 16 steals on the season. And 11 blocks. Approaching two minutes, and the Musketeers with nine to shoot for Wasselson. Dunham in trouble. Going to fire with two on the shot clock. Ball heavy off the left side. They will call it a shot clock violation. And Marquette gets the basketball back. As good as that first quarter was for Marquette, just 3 of 13 from the floor here for the Golden Eagles in the second quarter. Yeah, I think the zone has confused Marquette a little bit. Mm. Taking away some angles. Lots double team. Got it out there for Taylor, the floater in and out. Lot battling for the rebound. It is deflected out of bounds. And back to the Musketeers. Just at the same time, when Marquette's cooled off, the Musketeers still can't really find the range. 3 of 12 in this quarter. Yeah, Marquette has consistently been solid at the defensive end throughout the first half. Gary Gross with a pull up. That ball well short. That one was challenged well by Lott. Jordan King is on a run here for Marquette looking for Van Clunen. Good catch, he's triple teamed. And he left it out for Spingolo, who didn't 
Fire. So North Carolina work its half court here. Van Clunen again attracting attention, able to get a little fade away to fall from the baseline. Yeah, really nice drop step move to that baseline by Van Clunen. You know, she had an outstanding high school coach, Rob Matula. Van Clunen played for a state championship, Ohio Division I state championship. Van Clunen with eight today. She's done that in traffic. Nice move. Ryan Decker, good move, under control. A really nice patience, nice use of the pivot foot by Lion Decker. So here's Lubo. Lot King left all alone from three. Let that one just short. Van Cloonan has the ball stolen from Wasselson, and now it's out with Aaliyah Dunham. Is so going to play for one? No shot clock to worry about. The Musketeers. For all intents and purposes, will be happy with anything right here. And for a huge start from Marquette. Marquette led 23 to 4 following the first quarter. Leyendecker going back to the 10. Can't get it to go. Lubo got a hand on the rebound. Ball will go out of bounds as time expires here in the first half. But Xavier battles back a bit in the second quarter. And they trail at 33 to 16 after the big 23 to 4 start for the Golden Eagles. Lauren Wasselson carrying the load for the Musketeers offensively. That's Isabel Spingola delivering with 11 points on the afternoon. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Hartford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Back here at Sintas Center on the Big East Digital Network for women's basketball. Marquette with a 33-16 lead over the Xavier Musketeers. Xavier outscored Marquette 12-10 in that second quarter. Big East fast break is the weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of fast break during the season every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. On this week's episode, Megan was joined by the reigning Big East Player of the Week, Marquette's Selena Lott. The Marquette Golden Eagles are 3-2 and two in Big East play, coming off of a 2-0 and o weekend beating at St. John's and Seton Hall, as I'm now joined by the Big East Player of the Week, Selena Lott. Selena, your team lost your first two conference games. However, you've now won three straight Big East games. Head coach Megan Duffy said your execution has been different throughout these. What has been the difference in your execution? Um, honestly, it's just determination, and we all have to stay humble. Like our teammates, it's like a, a player-led team, so our coaches try to stay out of it as much, and then we just have to get an extra work just to be better. You had a career high, 34 points in your win over St. John's. Offensively, how were you able to have so much production? Honestly, I don't even see it as much as my coaches do. So my coaches like give me highlights of like when I can attack or like whenever I come off on the bench, my coach uh, Skeet will tell me and be like, this is what you have. Like you have your little pull-up game, you have the three, you can drive. So I just take her advice whenever. Head coach Megan Duffy also mentioned the fact that this season a lot of teammates have been stepping up. When you look to your game against Seton Hall on Sunday, Lauren Van Kloon didn't have as much of an offensive game as she usually does. And then you have freshman Cameron Taylor stepping up with her first career double-double. How much is that a testament to what this team is about this season? Yeah, uh, I feel like that's the beauty of our team. 
Like, we all can do different parts and we all have our talents. But it's just when one's down, one has to step up. So everybody knows their role and just attack it. Selena, just saying it right there, everyone knows their role. What is your role on the team this season? I would just say be more of a vocal leader and like trying to tell people like what positions to be in on defense. And then everybody kind of has the same role. We all tell each other what to do. We just have to take that into consideration. You're one of the upperclassmen this year, and you also come back with a lot of experience. You started on last year's team amongst all of that high-powered talent. How has that experience helped you into this year with the leadership that you have on the court? Um, it definitely has helped because like, I knew like how other teams played and what we had to like look forward to like scouting-wise. But everybody was ready. Who is the funniest on the team? Funniest on the team? Probably Altia. Ooh. Why yeah. is she so funny? She's interesting. She's different. She's so different. She loves to fish. She loves country music. But, like, at the same time, like, I don't know. She'll just always make a side comment that will make you laugh in the wrong times. <laughs> so if she loves country music at, at practice, at a home game, on your playlist, is there at least one country song that we can expect to be on that playlist? Probably not on my playlist, but definitely on hers. <laughs> What's your playlist like? What kind of music we have in that? Um, I listen more of like hip hop and R and B. Favorite pregame song? Probably "Whoa" well right now by Lil Baby. Can you sing it for us a little bit? Oh. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I don't. I don't know all the lyrics. <laughs> fair. That is very, very fair. <laughs> Selena, thank you so much for joining me. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe. And we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. Back here at Xavier's Sintai Center for Women's Basketball this afternoon on the Big East Digital Network. Mike Schmaltz alongside Rich Hoyt. Big start for the Marquette Golden Eagles here, and they lead it 33 to 16 here at the break. Yeah, Lawrence Bengola had a great first half, 11 points. Uh, three of those were three-pointers, uh, but Marquette really just physically manhandled Xavier in that first half, especially defensively, and then on the boards, plus 11 rebounding margin. And Marquette really took advantage of a very cool Xavier shooting performance, just 70% from the field. Yeah, and we saw Lauren Van Clunen got going both inside. She's able to face up and shoot it effectively as well. And you see a nice spin move there. And Van Clunen returns home to the Cincinnati area out of Mason, Ohio, and nice inbounds play there to Spingola. Spingola, the leading scorer in this ball game with 11, and you see her deliver one of her three three-pointers in the first half. Marquette got it going in transition as well. Yeah, you see Spingola as well right there, and Marquette was able to score early and often in the half court in that first quarter and then in transition too. Xavier did a better job defensively with that 3-2 zone in the second quarter. And Gary Gross was able to free herself a couple times, particularly in the paint. She gets a put back there. Xavier's leading scores. Kerry Gross with five. Lauren Wasselson with five. Sarah Leyendecker did some pretty good work for the Musketeers inside as well on a nice step over off the glass and in. And you see Aliyah Dunham here creating something for Lauren Wasselson who knocks down a three. Xavier's going to need more of those in the second half. Wasselson with a three for the Musketeers, and she went two for four from the free throw line for her five points. Marquette leads it 33 to 16 here at the half. We'll take a break and be back with more on the Big East Digital Network.
I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Hartford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. here in the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi, the Big East Conference men's and women's basketball teams recognizing the incomparable impact Dr. Martin Luther King made in his quest for national unity and social justice are wearing shooting shirts before their games this weekend that read, We Cannot Walk Alone. Here now from student athletes on the impact Dr. King has made in their lives. Dr. Martin Luther King had a huge impact on me. He just made me believe no matter what you do, anything is possible. I think the legacy that he put in place means a lot to me because I always think about where we came from as people of color, as athletes of color, and I just try to make sure that whatever I'm doing now in the present is going to set up those for the future. Being in the Big East is so diverse. Being at DePaul University is so diverse. So to come along and to share our talents is one of the messages that Martin Luther King shared with us, that we can not all come together and be as one. His willingness to sacrifice himself and you know fight for others, that goes a long way for the future and anybody who wants to stand up for, for change and equality. The Big East Conference and member schools champion excellence by embracing respect and diversity while striving for a culture of inclusion and equity. Be inclusive. Be inclusive. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope, we believe, and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Hartford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one.
Back with you on the Big East Digital Network for women's basketball. Marquette with a comfortable 17-point lead over the Xavier Musketeers as we are approaching the second half when we saw the We Cannot Walk Alone campaign here this weekend for the Big East teams and a little local flavor to that. Fred Shuttlesworth was a minister from Birmingham, Alabama, the co-founder of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, came to Cincinnati, worked closely with some issues with the homeless and civil rights here in Cincinnati. Also worked with Dr. King in Birmingham, Alabama. So spent some time here in Cincinnati, then went back to Birmingham after he retired. He was a pastor. Yeah, Dr. King inspired many. You talk about what he did to advance equality and social justice, provide economic opportunities, really all in the name of serving others and truly a, a man of, of high character and a great example to, to everyone regardless of race or gender. And tomorrow here in Cincinnati, the annual MLK Day Coalition March down uh, at the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, a wonderful venue downtown Cincinnati. Freedom Center has done some great work here in the community as well as we get ready to honor Dr. Martin Luther King tomorrow. Get a look at our statistics here from the first half as Marquette really sound out to that 23 to four lead. Xavier battled back a bit, won the second quarter 12 to 10, but as you can see, the Musketeers really struggling from the floor at 17% and from behind the arc two for eight. Really, they were 37% from behind the arc to start today, 36% from the floor. Well, you don't have to look any farther than that first line, Mike, and those those stats. And I've talked about how Marquette's really not setting the world on fire offensively. Xavier's 3-2 zone really bothered them, but Xavier just has not gotten anything going at the offensive end. And you have to credit Marquette defensively. They've been in passing lanes. They've taken away angles. Uh, you know, and they haven't even turned Xavier over that much. You can see just five turnovers for Xavier, but Marquette physically has just been overwhelming to Xavier at Xavier's offensive end. Taking advantage of the opportunities, Marquette was 9 of 20 in the first quarter, 4 of 16 for 25% in the second quarter. And for the Musketeers, Melanie Moore likes to talk about gut check time, and this is a big one and yet another one for the squad here this season coming into today with just one win here in the Big East and looking for a Victory here at home for the first time since the season opener. Ariana Gray puts him in good shape to start the third quarter. She delivers off the Lord Washington miss. Well, that's what Xavier missed in the second quarter. You know, they won that second quarter, but you, know, you would think Ari Gray would have had something to say about scoring a little bit more. Gray picked up two quick fouls in the first quarter and went to the bench. It's a nice answer inside by Altia Anderson. Anderson, one of those returning veterans for Megan Duffy. I'm sure Megan Duffy, big topic of conversation in the halftime locker room was what to do against that 3-2 as Sarah Leyendecker knocks down a mid-range jump shot. Good look there from Leyendecker. Musketeers off to a two for two start here in the third quarter. A little bit quicker start than the first half for the Musketeers. Uh, Megan Duffy made the comment yesterday after looking at the Butler film and says, this is what happens in the league when you don't bring your toughness. I'm sure that was addressed. Does she want to see her Golden Eagles keep the heat on, and Altia Anderson delivers her fourth point of the quarter. Well, and, and you know, to Marquette's you know, note on that, without Lauren Van Clunen for much of that game against Butler, she was banged up, only played 10 minutes. You know, that was a big reason, I think, that they were a little more ineffective in that second half. Gray gets free inside, and Musketeers in business here to start quarter number three. And three for four from the floor. Gross knocked it away inside. Xavier's still hanging around here. It's a 15-point deficit. That's a change in personality for this Musketeer team this year. Probably some previous seasons, Musketeers may have lightened up on the effort, but they keep battling here for Melanie Moore. Xavier man to man. Selena Lott goes inside. That ball is knocked away. There'll be a foul here against the Musketeers and Sarah Leyendecker. Leyendecker's first, the first for Xavier here in the quarter. Well, Lott really was kind of quiet offensively in that quarter. It's like all ball first before the contact from Sarah Leyendecker. Like Aliyah Dunham maybe made more contact than Leyendecker there. Lott going to go to the free throw line. She'll pick up her third point of the day. That's a bright spot for the Musketeers. Averaging 16 points a game. 
She's got her third there. She is a 74% free throw shooter. Converts the second. And lead right back to 17. Lott comes up with a steal there on the pass. Trying to take it in on Carey. Gross got some contact. Gross will pick up the foul. You mentioned Selena Lott. Really slow going offensively in the first half. She's starting to create some off of her defensive effort here in the second half. And get a couple more free throw attempts. Lott started the day with 29 steals. On the campaign, 92 assists. And she's back to the free throw line where she connects again. She's already almost at her average for assists per game, leading assist person in the Big East Conference. Second one up and good for Lott. Musketeers going right back to Gray. That one well strong, possibly deflected. Ball up top for Wasselson trying to deliver a three. Can't get that to go. And a good rebounding traffic thing for Van Clunen. Wasselson now one for six from the three. Mid-range won't fall there for Lott. Rebound inside for Anderson. She'll pick up contact on the putback. Another foul against Sarah Leyendecker for the Musketeers. Her second, Xavier's third in the corner. And it Townsend will re-enter. Now Tia Anderson, 55% from the free throw line for the season, takes her first attempts of the afternoon. Off the front of the rim. Just look at that long, linky build there for Anderson. I have to believe she's going to be an asset as she continues to find minutes here this season. Done him back to it for the Musketeers. And Marquette making it tough for Zeman to get any kind of look inside. Three away for Wasserson from the corner won't go. Anderson had a shot at the rebound. And they're going to call a foul against Ayanna Townsend, and that'll be her fourth. Melanie Morris. Made a couple of moves here to try to give Sarah Leyendecker some rest, and Anna Townsend not cooperating that well as she comes up with her fourth foul. And Courtney Pranger going to come off the bench now for Xavier. It has not been Laura, Lauren Wasselson's day. One for seven now from the three. Just a, a couple of those that go in, and you got to believe it gives Xavier a little bit more confidence at the offensive end. Wasselson shoots 37% from three-point range for the season. Ball goes inside for Spingola, got some contact. Anderson cleans it up and puts it back up and in. Anderson has been extremely active here in the second half. Eight now for Anderson. Okay, extends the lead now back into the 20s. Gross going inside, got some contact there from Selena Lott. So Lott picks up the foul, her second. Marquette's second here in the quarter. Cameron Taylor coming back on. It's really got to be disheartening for Xavier. They get off to the strong start offensively here in the half, and yet Marquette with the advantage, and you see Altia Anderson there, big reason why. Anderson with six rebounds, second leading rebounder for the Golden Eagles here. It's Kerry Gross slides one off the back of the iron. Gross with five points here today. And she had a nice stretch coming into this afternoon. Kerry Gross in double figures in three straight and five of seven. So you're sticking with that 3 2 zone. King inside. Taylor, strong move to the bucket. Marquette cleaning up in the paint. Boy, with, with Anderson and her continued improvement and then the young freshman Taylor inside. Already got Van Clunen. The inside depth of Marquette continues to grow. Pranger 
Tough defense there from King, and Anderson comes up with a steal. A lot in transition. In trouble, tries to find King. Ball's knocked away, and Marquette will keep it. Marquette working on a 22-10 advantage on points in the paint. And they're finding some room inside that zebra zone. Lot on the inbound, goes right to the basket, can't convert. Ariana Gray hits the floor in a rebound attempt, and they're going to call a foul there against Isabel Spingola for Marquette. Spingola is first. Morgan Sharps will re enter the ball game here. See the rebound come down, and Ariana Gray hits the floor hard. I don't know whether maybe incidental contact by Spingola there. You had a foul nonetheless. Just caught maybe Ariana Gray hip to hip. Gray couldn't find her footing on the way down. That was Marquette's second foul of the quarter. Sharps controls here for Xavier. A good look there for Pringer. Couldn't connect. Driving here for Ariana Gray. Goes into traffic, and Ariana Gray picks up her third foul offensive. And that's Xavier's fifth of the quarter here with 5-10 to go. Well, they're going to reverse that, I think. The first call was made on the inline by Linda Miles. And she went offensive right away. And there's the proverbial block charge. And looks like that ball was clean on the back end of that as well as Altia Anderson got a piece of it. You know, so I, Xavier catches a brick. I've seen situations like that before where one referee will have a block, one will have a charge, and you know, in most of those situations, as Gray makes her first free throw, most of those situations, if one of them has a, has a block, then I, I think it's a block because it's a matter of whether the, the defender's feet were set, were set, if that's you know the, what's in question. Nice job by the officials to get that one accurate. The free throw good by Gray. The last foul was against Cameron Taylor. Taylor now will play with two. And Marquette with three here in the corner. And Anderson going back to work in a post and knocks it in. Out to you, Anderson. Big third quarter for Marquette. Yeah, she was strapped with some foul trouble in that first half, too. And she's making the most of her time here in the second half. Anderson had two points in the first half. And now she's got it up to 10, so eight here in the third quarter. Ball inside is knocked away. They were looking for Courtney Pranger diving to the bucket. Brings up our timeout on the floor, 422 to go here in the third quarter. And Marquette in control, 47 to 24. Eight big points and a big advantage in the paint. A 24-10 lead down low for the Golden Eagles. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe. And we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Hartford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business. Chemical science. Occupational therapy. Philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. 
Thanks, Maltz Ritoy, back with you on the Big East Digital Network. Women's basketball this afternoon from Xavier's Senti Center. And Marquette's been in control throughout a 47-24 lead with 4.22 remaining here in the third. We talked about the firepower that Marquette lost from last year and some of the returning players assuming the leadership roles and really doing a nice job this season. Yeah, you look at those five returning players there and you see how much improved they are. You know, they go from 20 total points per game between the five to now almost 50. You know, and every one of those five has had to take on a new role. You know, uh, Marquette lost all five starters from last season, a great team. Uh, but this is a new team, and you know, I think Megan Duffy, I mentioned in the Open, has just done a tremendous job of, of putting these players into their new roles, adding the six freshmen, and those freshmen as well have combined for an additional 29 points per game on average, and that's why Marquette's in the discussion for an NCAA tournament bid right now. Megan Duffy yesterday talked to us a little bit about changing the style here compared to some of the teams in the league. A little more post presence this season for Marquette. We're seeing that today with Altia Anderson, Van Clooney. Also, Cameron Taylor, who's in there right now. Ball out of bounds. Stays here with the Musketeers. They'll have 20 to shoot. Heard an interesting point yesterday by Jimmy Dykes, the ESPN analyst, and he talked about the rule to reset the shot clock back to 20, and he said, why should the offense get penalized when the defense couldn't clean up the miss? You'd like to see it go back to 30 all the time. Ball goes inside. Musketeers couldn't come up with a bucket there. And King out with it here for Marquette in transition. Ball is taken by Anderson, and the block came up short, got her own rebound, to look for Spingola here, and she delivers a three. She's been terrific this afternoon. That's her four three. My response to Jimmy Dykes would be every decision that's been made, it seems like, in college basketball over the last 30 years has been to speed the game up, speed the game up, and that's just another one. Morgan Sharps gets on the board her first three. Sharps had a big game against the Cincinnati Bearcats here on December the 14th, six threes. And when she can get it going, it's been pretty impressive for the Musketeers. Sharps just a freshman about midway here through the season. Used to the college pace. They had done him knock that pass away on the baseline. It was intended for Cameron Taylor. So Marquette keeps it here. 3.02 to go in our third quarter and nine to shoot. Stasia Ross coming in for Kerry Gross. Marquette's been good off out of bounds plays. Again, another open look. Ball up and in. And again, Marquette continuing to play solid here in the third quarter with Spingola. Spingola off of the rebound now. She's connected on back to back threes. Now going inside and overshot King there. King stepped on the sideline right before she was trying to save that ball in. Isabel Spingola now with five threes on the afternoon. Leading all scores with 17. Spingola, another player Marquette has plucked out of Chicago, Illinois. Outstanding player, Whitney Young High School. It's the same alma mater as former First Lady Michelle Obama. Leah Dunham back to work here for the Musketeers at the point. Ball inside for Sharps, left that well short. Might have been blocked on the way up. Ball goes out of bounds off Marquette. Xavier keeps it. Chloe Murata back on. She replaces Tia Anderson. So Anderson sits with the 10 points, eight of them here in the third quarter. Really sparked a nice start to the second half for the Golden Eagles. the way inside Taylor cleaned up by Gray. Gray went to the rack on the right side, picked up the contact. Well, I mean, Marquette just continues to take away certain things. And even, 
Even this situation where Ariana Gray gets a little lane to the basket, it's going to be contested despite the, the contact. They make it difficult for you to finish. Three Golden Eagles swarming to Ari Gray, and that was one of the pieces of strategy here for Megan Duffy this afternoon is make Grayfield crowded in the lane. They accomplished it there. They sent her to the free throw line. And Gray misses the first. Last foul was on Chloe Murata. It was her third for Marquette. And the fourth for the Golden Eagles here in the quarter. Xavier also with four fouls. 2.10 to go. Gray knocks in the second. You know, as a first-year head coach, Mike, yeah, it's difficult to really implement your system and get your, your players to buy into what you're trying to do right away and become good at what it is that you're trying to do. But this Marquette team, I'm just extremely impressed with how they defend and they get Selena Lott open for a three there. First three in the afternoon for Selena Lott. She's got nine points now. Whistle here on a drive for Ariana Gray. Gray will get back to the free throw line. Marquette Stein trying to find its three point distance now. The goal is in a couple in the corner, now Lott getting going. That's just Lott moving well without the basketball and freeing herself. We close out there by the Musketeers as well. It's a nice rotation cross court. Get a good look there at Megan Duffy. Saw that shoot around yesterday. Megan Duffy, all business out there. She was all business. She can still as a fill it up too. a little bit too. Yeah, I saw her play in high school, and of course she had a great career at Notre Dame under Muffet McGraw. Played in a couple Sweet 16s for the Irish. She was an honorable mention All-American in 2006 and 2005. The John Wooden and Nancy Lieberman Award finalist as a senior in 2006. Also a Big East Scholar Athlete of the Year. Dabbled in the WNBA a little bit. Minnesota Lynx, New York Liberty, played overseas in Romania, Slovakia, and Wales. 2005 World University Games gold medalist as well. So here's Selena Lott at the free throw line. Just up the road in a little bit north of Dayton, Ohio. Shaman out, Julianne. You know, really no surprise either. You know, Megan Duffy said she wanted to, to coach since she was young. And uh, no surprise, she's had the success that she's had and on the career path that, that she's had. And when you look at her playing career and you know, the tutelage that she's been under as a coach herself. Took a nine victory Miami, Ohio team in 2017 18, her first head coaching position, won 21 games on them. Blossel seat short from the corner. Pranger doing a nice job battling here for the Musketeers, trying to get it out of traffic. Wasselton will give some help. Floater for Gray is short, and Gross can't save it. There's a position where Musketeers would have done better to settle it down. They had plenty of time on the shot clock. You're not going to get all 28 points back with one shot. Nope, definitely not. It really looks what Xavier's trying to do right now, just trying to force the action. It's been going, it's been hot from three. And travels there, trying to put a little move on Morgan Sharps. Sharps does exactly what you need to do against Spingola, run her off that three-point line and forces the turnover while she does it. Marquette eight of 12 in this quarter from the four, three of four from behind the arc, two from Spingola, one from Lott. Gray along three, and that's good. Aliana Gray gets a little chunk back. Gray now with 11, Xavier's leading score, the only Musketeer in double digits. Corner three away for Spingola. The afternoon continues for Isabel Spingola. 20 points, six of eight from behind the arc. What a pass by Lott. Other side of the floor with her left hand. Just an outstanding kick. Lubo. Marquette with some time here. 10 seconds. Good turnaround there for Van Clunen. He's short. Gray off with a rebound. Gray across midcourt. Gets a good look here for Wasselson with two seconds. And it comes up short. 
What a quarter for the Marquette Golden Eagles. 64% from the floor, four of five from behind the arc. The Marquette extends the lead 61-33 at the end of three. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope, we believe, and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. I'm from Chicago. Cleveland. Phoenix. Milwaukee. Harford. Colorado. Oklahoma. Thailand. Norway. Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business. Chemical science. Occupational therapy. Philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. Fun Sunday afternoon here in Cintas Center as they celebrate the Blue Blob's birthday. You see the mascot there on the left of your screen. A birthday party today for a lot of youngsters here at 1 o'clock. And Musketeers could use a little uplift as well here this afternoon as they trail the Marquette Golden Eagles 61-33. to We'll get a look at our players of the week here in the Big East. Selena Lott, as you see this afternoon, doing a great job with 11 points so far and 26.5 averaging last week. 6.5 assists per game. You see the rebound total as well. And then Matty Seeger is having a great year for Villanova. Ever 17 points and 14 boards last week. I mentioned might want to rename that award the Matty Seegerist Award, you know, for the rest of the season just because she's won seven out of the ten. But, you know, you look at the third quarter that, that Lott had here. You know, she had nine points, three assists in that quarter, got to the free throw line eight times, made six of them. And, you know, she really had a great quarter set up Spingola uh, for a couple of those and you know really just a, a, a nice quarter and having a really nice year is Selena Lott. Lott ended the half this afternoon with two points. She was one of six from the floor. Let's go, Lex. Final quarter underway. Musketeers with possession. Lasselson going inside. Foul there against Marquette as they continue to swarm to Ariana Gray. Every time Gray is within a couple of feet of the basketball. That really, I think Xavier got bailed out there because that pass from Lauren Wasselson really was right in the middle of a bunch of traffic in the lane. Foul was on Altia Anderson. That was her third. A good drive there and a layup for Leah Dunham for the Musketeers. Well, Leah Dunham did that a lot on Friday night against DePaul. Was very effective, but Marquette just does not give you those same opportunities. Dunham's first basket of the ball game. Lubo inside. Anderson floats. Can't get that one to fall. Gray away with a rebound for the Musketeers. Now she has eight. Gray against Anderson, throws up a desperation shot. That won't fall, and Selena Lott away with an easy rebound here for Marquette. Just not a good shot by Ari Gray. Lubo from the baseline, hits the side of the backboard. Anderson slides in to pick up the rebound and picks up contact. Foul against the Musketeers. It'll go against Lauren Wasselson. Wasselson second, Xavier's first here in the fourth quarter. Taylor Valaday checks in at guard, a 5'7 freshman from Chicago, Illinois, and Rich South High School. I'm sure your favorite high school, Rich Hoy, <laughs> in Chicago. I just love Chicago. The question is, where's Rich North? 
<laughs> and then the next question, is there a rich central? And Selena Watt lines up the three and delivers. I'll tell you one thing, they weren't named after me. 14 points now for Lotto at a quiet first half, and now only approaching her season average of 16. Needs one more bucket. Gray going to take a long three for Xavier. Back iron no good. Anderson down with another rebound. And Anderson has 11 rebounds on the afternoon. A double-double today with 10 points. Back iron no good. Gray sweeps away the rebound for Xavier. Going right to the basket. Gray really hasn't been close on the last three offerings from the floor. Yeah, I was getting ready to say, our Ari Gray needs to come out. She's taking some bad shots, really didn't hustle back there. Mel Moore's. A lot to validate. A timeout as Marquette takes the 66-35 lead. Musketeers needed a break there as Marquette's starting to wear them down on both ends. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope, we believe, and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Marquette, a 66-35 lead over the Xavier Musketeers here with 7.59 to go in the fourth quarter. Women's basketball for you on a Sunday afternoon. Get a look at what's ahead for the Marquette Golden Eagles. They'll be at home for four straight games. They'll take on the Georgetown Hoyas, Villanova, then Providence, and Creighton. So a really opportunistic stretch coming up here for Marquette. Yeah, if, if Marquette can hold serve at home, they're going to really have a good chance of getting back to the NCAA tournament. You, know, you take a look at Xavier's schedule, a long, tough stretch on the road. Creighton, who's played good basketball this year. Providence, um, you know, they're struggling right now uh, under Jim Crowley. They're at 0-7 in the Big East, but then you go to Butler, who I think Kirk Golovsky's really got that team playing better before you come back home for, for uh, that weekend, February 7th and 9th. Xavier's last home contest of the month here before a three-game road stretch. And they had a lot of work to do here to get back into this one. Marquette's been in control throughout after a huge start to the afternoon. A 23-4 Marquette opening quarter really set the tone for the day, and Marquette's been able to maintain the standard. Golden Eagles this half shooting 11 and 19 from the floor, and in the quarter, a two for five. Inside for Ayana Townsend, a good look, and Townsend going to pick up some contact. Foul there against Marquette. Uh, I continue to be impressed with Marquette defensively. Just see a nice action out of the timeout for Xavier there. Townsend drawing the contact. She's got to be able to finish that one. That's, that's one that you got a, a chance to, to finish, and she makes a first free throw, but you know, Marquette really is not laid off the gas pedal, you know, with that half-court defense. They've just continued to be active and solid, making everything difficult for Xavier. Foul there against Destiny Strother. Strother's first, second for Marquette in the corner as Townsend picks up a couple of free throws. Yeah. 
Boy, Murata going through traffic will pick up a reach in foul. Second foul. Goes against the Leah Dunham. Lee Dunham second. Xavier second here in the quarter. A lot of inbounds and timeout here for Megan Duffy and the Marquette Golden Eagles. So Megan Duffy didn't like what she saw there on the setup and going to reset here. Marquette mentally with the big lead, 66-37. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Hartford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. Back at Xavier Sintas Center, Selena Lott with 12 points here in the second half. Really got it rolling after just two in the first half. So she's won in three double figures now for the Marquette Golden Eagles. Yeah, she scored it and she's also distributed it. Seven assists for Marquette. And some of those have been to Isabel Spingola. Spin Spingola with 20 points in the game. Leads all scores, seven of 11 from the field. Six for eight from behind the three-point arc. Now Megan Duffy going to stretch her bench a bit here with 7.36 to go. Chloe Murata out with Cameron Taylor. Taylor Valade, Destiny Strether. And Jordan King is going to trigger this inbounds pass. Strether going inside. Good turn there for Taylor in traffic and knocked it in. Taylor just willed that one in. It wasn't a particularly great move, but just she just was not going to be denied. That one was going in the basket. Musketeers back with Aliyah Dunham, Ayanna Townsend, Kerry Gross, Courtney Pringle, the freshman, and Ashley Gomez, who handles here on the wing. Dunham, top of the key, off the mark. And it just has not been Xavier's day from the floor. Well, Aliyah Dunham has been really good from the field particularly from outside the three-point arc this season, 46%, but just one for nine today. Again, credit Marquette. Ball inside, Pranger battling there with Murata. Ball out of bounds, and Marquette will keep it. Xavier today shooting 22% from the floor, 21.6, the lowest of the season so far. If it holds up, they shot 23% in a loss to Ball State. Murata gets a couple there inside for Marquette. So he lost that game 70-49, and an eerily similar score here for the Musketeers as it's right on that number right now is 6.37 to go. Little jumper there from Kerry Gross for Xavier. Ball out of bounds, it goes through the hands of Cameron Taylor. Claire Keefe is gonna come back on here for Marquette. Jordan King gonna get a rest. 
So making Duffy recognize the grind. It is the Big East going to get her front line out, rest some legs mm -hmm. for a later battle. Throws up top. Gomez, quick three. She's got it. Actually, Gomez a little bright spot for Xavier. Nessa Gomez is one that can really shoot the basketball. And really, her roles kind of changed throughout her career here at Xavier. And a lot of inside has a little help there from Taylor. They're going to get a three-second call. And there's the value of the minutes now for the group that's out there for Marquette. Chances to work out some chemistry. She's getting a good look there on a quick set and release from Ashley Gomez. Gomez averages three points a ball game. She is 30% from three-point range for the season. Ball goes inside for Townsend, too strong. Loose ball, rebound picked up there by Struther. And Struther going to be called for a travel. It'll come back to Xavier. We got to look there at the athleticism of Ayanna Townsend. We saw a little bit earlier on that cut for a post player. Really has a lot of spring in the step. It's a matter of keeping her on the floor. She was injured last year. Just the majority of the year. Ariana Gray goes inside and knocks it home. Gray now with 13 on the afternoon. Much better patience that time by Ari Gray. She's really forced some shots this afternoon, but that one really just nice job of backing down the defender. Another three by Marquette. Strother connects. That's the ninth three of the afternoon for Marquette. Their nine is 17 from behind the arc. Somebody besides Spingola and Lott gets in on the action too. Gross with a drive. That one in traffic no good. And Taylor comes down with a rebound. Taylor's fifth board. Murata on Townsend. Kafis is going to try the mid range. In and out. Gray down, and that'll seal up a double double for Ariana Gray. Drive inside for Gross. Took some contact. Couldn't get that to go. Validate down with a rebound. And Gross hit the deck on the way back, and yep. they're going to call a foul here against Marquette. That was on Murata, I think. She kind of gave an elbow to Carrie Gross's upper body. That's what made Carrie Gross fall. It is on Murata, and that'll be her fit. I think Murata was trying to get an advantage in transition just to get down the floor, and ill-advised. Carrie Gross comes out for the Musketeers. Deja Ross came back in, and she'll try to pull up here from the free throw line. A little bit long, and a rebound out for Altia Anderson. Anderson's 13th board. Double-double herself. Contact there. We'll call the held ball. Marquette will keep it. Anderson's got a new career best in rebounding. Previous pass was 11. That was against Northwestern on uh, November 14th this season. Strutter looking for a second three. That won't go. Anderson digs out another board. Contact that she was trying to go back up and will call the foul on Deja Ross for the Musketeers. Her first, Xavier's third. I talked about rebounding being extremely important in the opening. Mike, and you know, really, this is the way Marquette's played defensively. They, they finished off a lot of possessions, but they're, they're plus 20 in the rebounding category. I said that number had to be in the single digits if Xavier was going to be successful this afternoon, and that's nowhere near it. Anderson working inside against Ariana Gray. Horses Gray's third foul. Xavier's fourth here in the corner. Sarah Leindeck are going to come back on, and Ariana Gray may get the rest for the remainder of the afternoon. Three with 13 points and 10 rebounds for the Musketeers. Valadez pass was tipped there. Taylor collects, but working against a double team. Nice job by Ayana Townsend of walling up and forcing the turnover. 73-44. Ariana Green's sixth double-double of the season is Ross. Tries a three, that one long. And look at Anderson continuing to hustle here with 3.48 to go in the big lead. 
Anderson, you mentioned it, my man. She just gets after it, whether it's the boards, whether it's the floor. Again, compliments to both Megan Duffy for keeping five of the six recruits, but how about Carolyn Keeger? Not sure if she knew she was going to be leaving the program, but really brought some nice athletes mm -hmm. in before her transition to Penn State. And Anderson has scored in double figures now, four straight games. Definitely playing her best basketball of the season. Dunham can't get the shot to go. She'll find it back on a nice play from Townsend. Dunham dumps in a little 10-footer. Nice shot by Anna Townsend. Showing a little bit of hustle there as well, getting on the floor after it. Kefis. Cross there for Strether. And a whistle as that ball went inside for Cameron Taylor. And foul's going to go against Diana Townsend. Townsend's fifth. She fouls out for the ninth time this season. Like I felt like you said that with your tongue and your cheek. <laughs> she was on the floor a little bit longer here this afternoon. Huh? Give her credit for the aggressiveness. 13 minutes today for Diana Townsend. Ended up with a couple of points to a two from the free throw line, but we saw the athleticism. If they could just keep her on the floor, yeah. might be able to make a greater impact here for the Musketeers. Yeah, I noticed last year, you know, she's a good post defender. You know, when, when somebody gets the ball inside, she can get, you know, her hands up, her chest out, and really, like, defend the ball in there. And just a matter of keeping herself on the floor, maybe developing a little bit of an inside game as well, the offensive end. Taylor with a couple of free throws now has 11, so four Golden Eagles in double figures in scoring. One so far for the Musketeers, 13 for Ariana Gray, eight for Carrie Gross. It's 20 for Spingola, 14 for Lott, 10 for Anderson, 11 for Cameron Taylor. Brian Dicker. Trying to find the room in traffic. She'll pick up a foul. Goes against Altia Anderson. That's Anderson's fourth. Sarah Leindecker to the free throw line. Leindecker's one of two at the stripe today. She makes her first. Transferred from Akron. Average three points, three rebounds in 17-18. Big time star here in high school. She has 14 points as a senior. And Mom County Myers played here for the Musketeers. A little bit of legacy as she knocked in her second. Valade for Anderson all alone. Struther throwing the ball into traffic. Anderson able to dig it out. Back out for Struther. Three's going to be short. Rebound for Deja Ross and Xavier. Head for Lion Decker, got around Anderson and laid it in. Nice pass by Dunham, really nice catch too by Lion Decker to get both feet established on the ground, go up strong with it. Lion Decker really has improved throughout the course of the season, and you know, Xavier has needed somebody inside that can score a little bit outside of Gray. Lion Decker can defend a little as well. Corner shot is away. That's a three, and it's good for Taylor Valade. It's Valade's first three of the season. Now that's the corner that I mentioned could be open a lot. I think Xavier done a nice job of guarding the corners out of that zone most of the afternoon. Foul there, a reach in as Lauren Lasselson came up to meet the pass. Destiny Strether, a little contact. Marelle Lubo trying to check back in here for Marquette. And we're going to go and have a video review here with Marquette leading 78 to 50 with a minute 35 to go. I must have missed something. So here's the video the officials will review here. Andrew Bills, Linda Miles, and Ray Bullock. I think we saw something down at Xavier's offensive end. This is the exact feed you're seeing here from 
DVR Sport, video replay provider here throughout college athletics. Not sure what they'd be looking at here, Rich. See Sarah Leyendecker lay that ball in and now a quick rerun to the Marquette possession. I don't know what they could possibly be looking at here, especially in a 28-point game with a minute and a half left. But nonetheless, we'll sit here and hang out. I think they were checking to whether it was a three-point basket or not, or whatever it was. Andrew Bills, Linda Miles, and Ray Bullock have convened. And it looks like we're going to put Lauren Lasselson at the free throw line here for the Musketeers. There's 59% of the line, 26% from the floor today. Lauren Wasselson, a sophomore from Valencia, Pennsylvania, went to Mars High School, and the mascot there, Rich, is the Planets. <laughs> Aptly named. Planets. Lauren Wasselson, a perfect choice with the red hair. I did not know that. The Planets, the Pittsburgh La area. Wasselson able to connect. Find out all kinds of things with the big league. Insert a Cincinnati, a joke from a Cincinnati person right there, I'm sure. Steelers certainly on a different planet than the Bengals as we wind up the NFL season here. Ball inside for Taylor, and that's up and in. Marquette now with 80 on the afternoon and cruising with a minute to go. Yeah, Marquette just has played really good basketball today, and they, they've never let their foot off the gas pedal. Really impressed with Megan Duffy's team and what she's done here this season. Here's Deja Ross looking for a three for Xavier, and she connects. Ross picks up her second bucket of the afternoon. Two threes today for Deja. Keith is on a curl. Shot a little bit short. Ross away with a rebound. Fakes the three. Looking inside for Pringer. And a reaching foul coming here against Destiny Struther. Full Marquette. Megan Duffy walks away just to say, you know, let's stop fouling. This Marquette team has fouled a lot here in the second half in particular. Courtney Pringer gets an opportunity here from the free throw line, 47% for the season, and floats in her first. And these are free throws, 25 and 26 for Xavier this afternoon. Pringer second short, Leyendecker up with the Musketeer rebound. A ball out of bounds, stays with Xavier. You know, one thing I'll say about Xavier, this has not been a pretty afternoon of basketball for them, but Mel Moore's team continues to to fight, and they're diving on the floor after loose balls, a lot of them here in the fourth quarter. Deja Ross now with her third basket. And they haven't stopped playing, and a lot of that can be attributed to Mel Moore and her leadership. Capus for Norell Lubo, a freshman. Strother inside, runner won't go. Gun him out and away with it. Wasselson, a little mid-range, time expiring, and Wasselson will knock it home. The Musketeers fight down to the final second, but fall 20 points short of the Marquette Golden Eagles here this afternoon. Marquette to 13 and five overall, four and three, and an important road victory in the Big East. The road record now six and three for Megan Duffy's troops, and the Musketeers two and 16 now on the campaign, one and six in Big East playing a one and nine here at the Sintai Center. So Megan Duffy. Golden Eagles going home happy with a road victory here over the Xavier Musketeers, 80 to 60. We'll take a quick break and be back with more on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope, we believe, and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. My parents never taught me anything about managing money.
The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon, and I chose, I chose, I chose, I chose Xavier University for business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public, computer science, because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people, the sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now, and now, I am, I am, I am, all for one. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Back at Xavier Cintas Center where the Marquette Golden Eagles score a big road victory in the Big East over the Xavier Musketeers, 80 to 60 this afternoon and much due to the efforts of Isabel Spingola here who joins us. Isabel, 20 points this afternoon, your ninth double figure scoring game of the season. Got it rolling from three today, six big threes. How'd it feel out there? Yeah, it felt good just to get back and get this win with the team. Um, obviously, I wouldn't have hit any of those shots without my guards finding me. So just got to thank them for that. Along those lines, Isabel, your, your team has shared the ball extremely well. A like big reason why you've been successful here in the first half or so of the season. Today, 25 assists on 29 made field goals. Talk about that that difference and really how uh, Coach Duffy's style has, has helped that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's been like a big thing for us this year is getting our assist on our field goals made. So to hear that we had 25 tonight, that's really good and obviously really proud for a comeback win for the team, and we just got to keep it rolling and have good practices this week. You got some solid minutes last year. Talk about how well that prepared you to come into this season, really starting to fill that leadership role, the scoring role a little bit more along with Selena and Altia Anderson this year. Yeah, I just think we've been working well as a unit, and we just got to stay together, and obviously each game we're going to get better, each practice we're going to get better, so yeah. It, the defensive end, I thought really the story of, of the day today was was how well Marquette played at the defensive end. Uh, what was it that, that made you all so successful, especially early on in limiting Xavier to, to just those 16 first half points? Mm -hmm. um, just our togetherness, our communication, uh, just being locked in on the de defensive side and focusing on personnel. That's Isabel Spingola, a big 20-point afternoon as Marquette scores a 20-point victory over the Xavier Musketeers here on the road. Marquette to 4-3 and three in conference and right there in the hunt for the third position. So that'll wrap it up here for us. For Rich Hoyt and our Big East Digital Network crew, our Xavier Media Services crew, I'm Mike Schmaltz. Thanks for joining us here for women's basketball this afternoon, and we'll see you back next time on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi.